So as far as deciding what kind of mesh would best represent uh, the foliage once it's laid in UE4, I want to look at this example of what I have is uh, three planes assembled in a certain way. We have one going horizontally, one going across, and one going this way. So the X, Y, and Z. I also have a faceted sphere and I have a smooth sphere. And then I have a directional light indicating where the uh, overall sunlight is going to be. And so what you can see here is that the complexity of the form change based on the planes um, with these different forms, it's interacting in a different way. Now, obviously with the smooth sphere, um, we're getting a perfect fall off of where we have the default light value. We have the half tones that go here. We have the terminator and then we would have the bounce light, but this is um, just a simple directional light showing one light source. So the bounce light would uh, indicate here past the terminator, but we're not going to see that here in the Maya viewport. Um, so we see a smooth fall off there. We see um, less, but still a decent amount of plane changes here on the faceted sphere. So we have uh, one value here, we have a value here, we have a value here, and we have the darkest value here, uh, which gives a nice, uh, more complex uh, element of value change. Now, if you look at this one here, um, it's very limited because it only has two values uh, going on here. So when I move this around, it does have three values, but that's the most complex that this uh, arrangement of planes is going to get. And the reason why that is, is that the planes are very simple and they're perfectly perpendicular to the source of the light. So even if I change this, you can see it's only three values, no matter how I rotate it. And the problem with that is it really takes away a sense of the richness of the lighting that you would lay this on. And you'd have a lot of binary, it's either on or it's off elements of lighting. And in game lighting, this is really important because if you don't have the ability to do real-time global illumination, your plant life can look very look very off where it's lacking that richness in the lighting and color because it only has a certain amount of values to play with if it's uh, this limited in the amount of polygons. For things like clusters of moss and clusters of grass, it can get a little bit tricky because we want a high dense resolution of things like moss and grass. We need a lot of polygons. And so therefore we need to have some pretty low res polygons. In fact, the lowest that we can possibly do, which is a triangle, which is just three vertices. But at the same time, we don't want the problem that we ran into before, which is this example, which would be perpendicular planes without a lot of complexity. So in order to combat this, what we have to do is make sure that the placement of these triangles is set where it's not perfectly perpendicular straight up and down. Um, every time you generate a cluster of grass, you need to make sure that each plane is bent, facing away just a little bit from the uh, angle of the sun. That way that you get a more of a complicated sense of lighting that can occur rather than just a perpendicular straight up and down effect. Same goes with the moss here. Now, you can see here that this has been duplicated quite a bit. I just took uh, groups of clusters and just duplicated them around the origin point here. But again, they all have a more organic overlapping sense where all of them are branching out. And how I started with this is I just brought one over. I just uh, control D duplicate. Let me bring these out here. Now what you can do is you can just duplicate this four times. And then if you select them all, then duplicate them again. When you rotate them, they're all gonna rotate on their own axis. So this is a great way to work smarter, not harder, where you can duplicate, you can rotate, and you'll get this chaotic sense of dynamic rotation without having to grab each individual piece and rotate it one by one. It's a really great way to get a, in just a matter of seconds, get a pretty complicated look of uh, these triangles all working together like this. But again, looking into this, you can see an angle going down. None of these are sticking straight up. This one is a little bit, and we'll just uh, fix that like that. And then you just group this and have it ready to export when we are done here. For the flower assembly, it's just simple as duplicating the petal and just doing a circular duplication and getting a flower shape. For the center, which would be the pollinating area, I just took a very simple cube, essentially, and just assigned it 
on the UV space so it's inside the flower. The flower is a small enough space where we don't need to worry too much about the detail. So I just took the UVs and placed them in the middle of the texture here. The same goes, I created a longer uh, tube shape. And even this, I think, is a little uh, redundant. I didn't end up uh, exporting it when I brought it into UE4. And so with this, I just have a very simple flower shape made out of just a handful of polygons, about 39 verts uh, a piece. So this would be a clearer example of if you tried to do something like a clump of moss, but applying it with just straight planes, you get this effect, which almost looks like a very uh, abstract sort of shard cluster looking piece here. And even with textures applied, you can run into a lot of problems where you have a more chaotic sense of where the planes of lighting are occurring. So this would be an example of something you really don't want to do if you're assembling um, something like a clump of moss or even a clump of leaves, something like that. What we want to look for is something that matches more like this, where we have a series going here where we have a little more high resolution, uh, kind of like the cylinder example that we showed here. If I turn the texture back on, you can see that the branches, the leaves are following this uh, element of planes that are shifting. And with each plane, you get a different sense of value. So probably the middle ground that we want where we don't want too high of a poly count is this right here. So we can take this, we can apply where we have three sides rather than one simple side. And with these branches here, I created a sense where I created this diamond shape and lifted it up so that we have two elements of form change here. And you can see here with the lighting that we're getting a nice, more complicated element to fall off. And that's with the hardened planes. If I smooth this, you can see that that's a lot smoother as well. And it's really united where we get this nice uh, soft fall off going on here because of these diamond shapes that were created. Uh, and all this is, is I just created a plane. I just shrank the bottom here. And then I just use the cut polygon tool to create this diamond shape in the center and lift it up. So it kind of has this uh, nice sort of elevated diamond shape here. And now when I take these and assemble them in a certain way, you can see that these branch clusters are getting a little bit more realistic in their element of uh, fall off going on here.